What's up, guys? Woohoo! We are back with another episode of The Wreck. Yes, welcome we are. Back to the podcast. If you're new here, welcome to The Wreck. This is your place, man. You got to be here place. listening. Make sure you say- Every Thursday, you know, we got the rec going on. It's the best day of the week podcast. Yes, yes. I love Thursdays. Though. I love Just Thursdays. Do you podcast. love Thursdays? I love Thursdays. Oh, oh yeah. everybody loves Thursdays. Everyone loves Thursdays. Huh? <laughs> I love Thursdays. It's better oh than God. Friday. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Friday junior. That's there what I like. Go. Go. Actually, fun fact. You know one of the reasons why I actually wanted it to come out on Thursdays? Why? Because I actually just love Thursdays. Really? Yeah, because I love Fridays. I love Friday. yeah. Fridays are my favorite day. But I love Thursdays because Thursdays like kind of that reminder, like, yeah. okay, Friday's coming. So like that fire day ahead is coming. So I was like, yo, imagine having a podcast on, on that Thursday. day. You know what's funny? We were supposed that's to actually do it. Remember we were gonna do it on Tuesday. We were actually mm. gonna release on Tuesdays. What so happened? That's a fun little fact. <laughs> Thursdays are better. Okay. Thursdays we'll are better. It's almost weekend. There you go. It's almost yes. weekend. Yeah. No, Both yeah. Thursdays. But jumping right into it, guys, we are here with a very special guest. We have the yes. one and only Danielle Hibedo with us today. <laughs> so happy to have you on so oh. let's dive in i just hit my mic i'm sorry i'm not supposed to do that let's just dive right in who are you man, are you, my man? i mean before i start i want to say thank you guys for inviting me it's an oh, honor of it's course. legit an honor because i was so excited to, uh, for this episode but yeah um i'm daniel i'm 22 years old and i'm the most basically the most ordinary person you know um i do some things here and there but i try not to t- speak about it because it's not something I, re- I really want to pride myself in but it's I'm the most ordinary person you know. Um, I love video games. I love, love going, I love traveling. I love music. I love I, I love gardens too. So like everything oh people gosh. love. That's I, probably I'm, why my mom loves you. Yeah. She loves gardening. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm I am just the most ordinary person you guys know, and I'm just here. For, to record a podcast with you guys <laughs> Aww, here to serve the lord yeah that's exactly how lord. it should be that's awesome yeah, you man. know so a little backstory we've known daniel for like the longest time yeah. well you have i've only known him for like since like since 2019, 2019 like since that worship night yes. yeah you guys did a worship night together which we did that awesome. was the first time i met him yeah. and i was like this dude's cool i like him uh-huh. yeah <laughs> and then you came back with a stomach bug <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I did. and then you got a stomach bug <laughs> I was I was fine. Oh no, everyone, it was, everyone got sick, right? I was fine. I I was the only person I think who did not come back sick. No, wow. I, yeah, I did. Yeah. I did. Oh, that must have been awesome because you love getting sick, don't you? I <laughs> love getting sick. I've gotten COVID yo, twice. Thank God, yo, COVID. Yo, can I just fun fact about the COVID story? First time Nick got COVID was on his birthday, last year, and I was with him the whole day and I didn't get it. And then one time I got COVID months later, and he got it. I only got COVID once, but I had, like, five COVID scares within the span of, like, two months. Wow. It was in 2020, but... Oh, so it was, like, that Yeah. Time. No, I like, got it 2022. Okay, I'm sorry, but if you got... If I you know. Got COVID after, like, summer 2021, it's embarrassing. Yeah, I did. <laughs> that, that was literally me. <laughs> it's embarrassing. And you got it twice in 2022. I got it twice. <laughs> no, literally, 2022, I got it twice. I was like, come on, bro. Like, I never got COVID before. I'm I mean, wondering. I know people who've gotten it, like, three times, four times. Oh, yeah, so, me like, too. I've only gotten and it once. But, guys, no. we're out of the pandemic now, so... Yeah. Claudia got it's it just too. a cold now. It's considered a cold. Yeah, yes. it is. Yeah. But that's crazy. Oh, but let's just jump into it. Yeah, we know your backgrounds and you know who you are. But now we got to know the real background, Mm -hmm. your testimony, your encounter with Christ. Talk to us about that. Okay, my testimony goes back even before I was born. So, um, for about so my mom and my my mom and dad they got married around like 1997, and they were trying to get pregnant for about like my mom. Sorry, was trying to get pregnant for around six years, and around I think it was nine. No, they got married 1995. Okay. And in 1997 they came. Uh, to America, right? To America. And then since they came here, they were, they were trying to have a baby. And uh, my mom went to many different doctors, had many different treatments. And she, like, she, just, told, like, she just got told that she wasn't going to get pregnant. Um, and it wasn't until, like, August that she got pregnant. And, but immediately after, um, my mom went to go do a sonogram. And side note, my mom had uterus to Delphus, which is oh, two uterus, basically. It's actually, uh, it's not as rare, but it's not as common. But it's like, I've seen some stuff about it. Uh-huh. So she had basically two uterus. But at that time, the sonogram wasn't able to pick that up because the science hadn't um, been had, to that level yet. To that level yet. So she, um, she went to go get the sonogram done. And the doctor told her, you have to abort this kid immediately. <gasps> because they had thought it was an ectopic pregnancy. Oh, wow. So, yeah, you know what an ectopic pregnancy is? So they had thought I was in topic pregnancy, and then that morning, my mom's pastor at that time was walking through the park at, a, at his at the place that he lived at, and then there was a wind that came, and immediately in that wind, he heard the Holy Spirit say, "Pray, pray for my mom." Whoa! And it was a, that same day, 
and then immediately after, like, like my mom told, like, found out about everything, she called her pastor, and she and he, she told him everything that happened, and he said, "Don't do it. Like, don't do it at all. Um, don't get the abortion. Don't get the abortion because it's not just it's not that it's just it's like it's a sin and all that, but it's because, um, sorry, I got distracted. Um, <laughs> it's not because it's a sin and all that, but it's because like there's so much, like, promise for his for his life, so don't do it." basically wow. and then immediately after my mom signed the papers like i'm not going to do it i'm i'm going to still go through this pregnancy and then wow. later on um this is like, i think she was two or three months pregnant i don't remember and then her water broke in the day of her birthday legit like 11 p.m the day of her birthday <gasps> wow. yeah wow. oh my gosh wait are your birthdays like really close yes oh wow so funny story is though she was in labor for three days <laughs> hello <laughs> yeah <gasps> <laughs> no, your wow. mom. Okay, here's the thing. I always knew your mom was a champ. Yeah. But I did not know she went through that. She like my mom has gone through so much. Like she's a champion. Like, um. So she, so she wasn't dilated for like I think she was only dilated for four centimeters. But also like she was so drugged out that she wasn't able to, literally like push me out. Uh -huh. So. so she she had a C-section, I'm assuming. Yes, mm -hmm. but that that was when my heart rate my heart rate started going down like uh -huh. a lot, so it got so low to the point that they had to do an emergency C-section, and when they pulled me out, the umbil they found that I was born purple because oh. the, umbil was the umbilical cord tied around your neck twice. Whoa, double wrapped. Double wrapped. Oh my god. So like you can tell, like I like the enemy was trying to take me out immediately. No, like, yeah. yeah. So um, I was born a healthy baby that was just premature. Um, I, I, I had jaundice, but like I had to stay in the hospital for a couple of days, but, um, I, and then since then, like I had a healthy childhood, um, I, I was born and raised in a Christian family. Mm -hmm. Um, my, like my parents came, like they were consecrated as missionaries in Brazil to come and, oh, wow. to, uh, wow, and I like, know that. yeah, That's mm -hmm. crazy. so, um, my mom actually helped plant a, a church with her pastor and with her pastors, um, which is my parents our first church, church. Yeah. yeah so that's yeah. where we're dancing on each other we knew each yeah. other from my first church and your first church too right yep. that's awesome Basically, yeah. Yeah. that's where my dad converted actually really that is and that's where my parents met each other i didn't know that yeah and also fun fact too your mom was like the first person in america my mom met other than her family that's that's really interesting that's crazy because my aunt who was just here came uh -huh. with your mom she did she came with my mom yeah mm -hmm. that's how they knew each other yep so, oh, and then there's surprise. me. I was just there. In <laughs> <spirit>. <laughs> I was there. You know, Anil always says this all the time. Like, yeah, and I was there in spirit. I was like, Nick was there in spirit. I was just no, there. No, yeah, in that's, that's crazy. Wait, who's older, Nick or you? Nick is older. Yeah, I'm older. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, so but he was there in spirit. He was there. I was in there. In spirit. Spirit. <laughs> he really was. No, but seriously, like, our parents have known each other for like, the longest time. Yes, yeah. I think si even since before I was born. I think so too. You were born in 2001. 2001, April 5th, 2001. Yeah, so it was before you were born. Yeah. Because my mom came in 99. And your yeah. mom picked her up at the airport. Yep. Dude, the world is so small. It's mm -hmm. crazy. But anyways, continue. That's so crazy. then I was born and raised in a Christian home. And because, like, I was, like, my parents were Christian. And because we were Brazilian, they would always put, like, worship music at home. And then there was one night, and I think my mom heard the Lord say, like, start putting on worship music when he goes to sleep. And then because I was Brazilian, my mom, like, she, like, uh, um, she got a CD called uh, From Gentro Throne. Oh, let's go. I love Gentro Throne. I love him so much. If y'all are Brazilian, don't know Gentro Throne. Are you really yeah, Brazilian? What are you doing? Are you, are you really what Brazilian? I love, like, <laughs> even to this day, I'll listen to them every yes, single day. Yes, my favorite songs come from Gentro Throne. Me too. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite Gentro Throne song? Oh, you know my song. Uh, I have so many. Um, one of their newer ones, I don't think you guys know, is No Fico I Sing. Um, I think I've heard of it. It came out in 2020. Uh-huh. 2021, but they reported it in 2020. Mm -hmm. But, like, more recently, I've been listening, because of, the, like, some situations I've been finding myself in, I've been listening to Aze Mia Ki, uh, Esperanza. Mm -hmm. Oh, Esperanza. I know that's on yeah. the follow's favorite. Yeah. She said one time that that's her fa one of her yeah. favorite songs. And um, I also love Preciso de Chi. Oh, that's her favorite. That's what I was going to say. Really Preciso de Chi is my favorite, favorite, yeah. all-time favorite song. And also, Vitara da Cruz. I, oh, I love you. So too. actually, that was the first song I was listening to Gentle Throne when I was three years old. My mom walks in, saw me watching the, because they had like VHS tapes. I yes. was watching those VH, the VHS tapes. And my mom came in with me jumping on the bed to Vitaria da Cruz because I was oh having so much God. fun. Like, oh, she <laughs> so yeah, especially that part. That's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Mine is probably Quero Subir. 
Oh, I love that song. Yes. She actually just recorded it recently again. It's going to come out soon. Oh, oh no yeah. way. I love the fast version, though. Not the slow, but the fast Oh, yeah, the Hanover version. Yeah. yeah. The, no, I love that. With that. Yeah. So, legit, because I like I love Jennifer Throne, legit, everything about Jennifer Throne, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, I'm like, a father if you're watching it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't care. People think I'm a fanatic with Jennifer Throne. It's like, no, they've impacted my life. Okay? No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're there like you me go. with Andrek, you know, I love Andrek. You know, yeah. I love Alessandro Vilas Bosa. I love those Yeah. Because they've impacted. You went yeah. to their conference, didn't you? I went to their conference, yeah. I, mean, I actually went to the uh, Jennifer Throne conf- conference in 2019. Really? No way, my and dream. Not, and at that conference, they recorded a c- two, uh, two albums, Imersão Quatro, which mm-hmm. was like a uh, Completely spontaneous album, and that's when, uh, and also a Gentle Throne Novi. Uh, this oh. uh, no, they did Zenov. It was oh, like their, oh, 19th oh, album. their 19th Oh, their 19th anniversary, album. right? No, their 19th album. Oh, got it, 19th. got it, got it. Got so it. Like, oh. they, they translated Raise a Hallelujah to Portuguese. Oh, so that's when they did the uh, Do, it, Do again. it Again album. Yes. What was Both it called? Phase. Both Both Phase. Phase album, like, right? I was there at that recording, but like, so like, it got so cool. Like, I was there, like, uh, at the second field, like at the second of okay, Bancada, whatever it is. The second floor of the church. Yes, right? basically. Because that's at Lagoa, right? Yeah, yeah, I was like at the main like yeah. campus. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, we're going to open up the front because we want you guys to like enjoy the concert, enjoy like the, the recording. And it's like, okay, bet, I'm going to try to go. And then the, the director, like, uh, I think, I, I forget his name. Um, the director, like, he said, okay, it's getting packed. You guy, uh, you you person over there with the jean jacket. I had the jean jacket on. You're the last person to come in. <gasps> <laughs> it was me. No way. <laughs> and then, like, if you were to see some scenes, like they were recorded, you can see me like towards the side. And then towards the end of the recording, Ana Paula called like, the people in the front to come on the stage and just like do like a mosh pit on stage. And I went up on the stage no, for the you mosh didn't. pit. I did. <laughs> no way! Oh, that is so sick. No. It was like because so recently we found the Otra Vez album, and I love Otra Vez. You know the song "Do It Again." Yeah, it's the translated version. Yes. It's so fire. I mean, there's so many translations, but I think that, that one was my favorite. The best one. That yeah. was my the favorite one. one. Yeah. That is crazy. I saw the video for it. I didn't see you. I didn't know that. If I knew that you were there, I'd probably look for you. I, I can show you after we're oh, done. Let's go. I, let's go. Yeah, I definitely want to see that. Oh, yeah. that's okay. So, Jesus Throne is a very big part of your life, clearly. Yes. yes. But uh, when I was listening, I, I would go to sleep and my mom would put Jan Shrutron, like back at, like in the background. And um, I would just go to sleep with worship music on. So, my mom already knew that worship was going to be like a huge part in my life. So I would go to church every single Sunday. I would look the pe- like look at the people like your dad playing guitar, and then mm-hmm. there was another person playing drums at that point. And I, like the first instrument I picked up was drums. Okay. And um, I yeah, just like me. Yeah. Just like, yeah. <laughs> just like me. Yeah. So like I would go after service. I would get like pens and start drumming with pens. Wow. Yeah. And then like my mom said like I think I need to, I need to get like a drum kit for him. So they bought me a drum kit, and then I would just like go with the flow because I had rhythm. Uh-huh. I would just go and just like whatever, like just play whatever sounded good. But then growing up, I also was able to pick up piano and pick up guitar. Like I think my latest gu- instrument was a guitar because I picked it up when I was like 13, uh-huh. 12. And now I'm 22, so like around like nine years, years ago ish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, yeah. yeah. Um, so like growing up at the church, I was always av- involved with worship, with music, and all that. Like um, even forming like a, a small worship band at church, um, mm-hmm. I like Jesu da Cruz because I Jesu do Tron Jesu da Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually do that? Yeah. No way. You weren't there anymore. I know um, I had left at that point. Yeah. Yeah, and then there were some other people. I I, I still talk to them today. Um, like some of the people at that church that I like I grew up with them, and they were like. And, that, and it's not that I forced them. Like, the parents like, oh, Daniel did this. Let's all come together and just, like, let's bring them together. Bring into a little band. Yeah. Oh, that's so, so sweet. I probably so still remember everyone who was there. Yeah. Aw. So, um, that, like, I was, like, I always loved worship. I always loved music. But because I was just growing in the church, it didn't, like, just because you grow in the church doesn't actually mean, like, you're, you're lived, a Christian. Like, yeah. yeah like, you've actually given the Lord your life, you know? 100%. So, like, around the age, so, like, I'm fast forwarding it a lot. So, like, from the age of, like, Five to ten, five to eleven, I was always at church. Like I wanted to go, but then like right when I got into sixth grade, seventh grade, I got involved with the wrong friendships. Um, so I got introduced to a lot of dark stuff, a lot of evil stuff, and um, that like because of that, I was like, you know what? I prefer this more than going to church. But I would still go to church because my mom. F- I, I I mean, at that time she didn't know, but at that time also like I was just going because she went. You, you were know? going forced, pretty much. Basically, but I, it, it wasn't really forced. Like I would still go because like my friends were there. Mm-hmm. Um, like sometimes you were going for the wrong reasons. Basically, yeah. And then it wasn't until I got into high school, um, like my faith wasn't my own. Like I had the wrong friendships. I would like I, like, but even more when I got into freshman year of high school, wrong friendships. Like like really that deep in like into uh, into a lot of like other stuff that I was going through, 
And um, at that point, I was like, I don't really want to do uh, church stuff anymore. I was just like, I would just go because like they needed a drummer. So I would just go. But also at that point at my life, I was doing a lot of uh, extracurricular activities. I was swimming. I was a part of a, two clubs at school. So it's like I just came up with an excuse that I would miss church on Wednesdays and just go for a swim practice. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, oh, like I had this meeting meeting, but my mom's like, no, you're still going to go to church. So like she knew, or like I think she was able to see that I didn't really want to go. But mm-hmm. she like, my mom is a prayer warrior. Like, oh, yeah, she is. Bro, like mm-hmm. my mom is crazy. Yeah. Like. Dude, one thing about moms, if you have a prophetic mom... Oh, oh. <laughs> Don't try to do anything. She's going uh-huh. she to find out. She's connected with God. I, oh, yeah. She sent me this video earlier this week and she said, one thing about moms who are connected to God, if she says that she like she had a dream about you, you better be nervous. You better be praying. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. You better be nervous because you already know something bad. Uh-huh. She, God revealed something. Now, I fun fact about your mom. Um, so she used to work with my mom for a while, too, I yeah. think you remember. There was one time my mom turned around and she, her back got stuck. Mm-hmm. And she couldn't move. And my mom screamed. She was like, oh, come here. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Your mom put her hand on my mom's back, prayed for her instantly. Boom. Yeah. This girl was healed. Yeah. Like Look my- at Nick's face. Yep, this is true. Yeah. Yo. Uh-huh. Like, there was, there, I, think, I think she, um, around 2015, my mom was at a prayer service. And, like, they were doing, like, a, like a, camp, a prayer campaign complaint mm-hmm. uh, at that church. And it was basically more for healing. And there was a there was a mom there who had a little, little girl, and she had a and she had I think she had leukemia, the little girl. And my mom, like she got to, like she was in the glory, like she was in the presence of God, like like so in it, like she couldn't stop like speaking in tongues, she couldn't stop praying, like it was like just her. And then I think the person was speaking, and then in the middle of it, the Holy Spirit just literally took over her, and she started like she went into this, she went to those women and said like I and basically prophesied. Like, on behalf of God, and started saying, I have heard your prayers. Like, I've, like I'm going to send, like, healing is going to come and all that. Fast forward, I think, four or five months, the mom comes back, and her leukemia is gone. <gasps> yeah. Wow, that is such God a blessing. Is, yeah. You see how God works? You see how yeah. God works? God is amazing. Yeah, God works. But going back to high school, um, because I was, like, wrong friendships and all that, and the church that I was a part of, it, um, there wasn't that many people that like it, it was um, in my age frame. In my so it age wasn't a lot of youth. Yeah, so I was like, I'm just here because like I'm just here to help them out. But my faith wasn't my own. I was just like, eh, it's okay. So I was a part of a Christian club in high school. Um, and sorry, I just burped. <laughs> <laughs> you can leave that in. I this is as like this is as like. Oh my gosh! Wait. <laughs> like yeah. <laughs> oh man. Like, I'm wrong. Hey, like, you should have. You should have. That's you put up the effect. Yo, that caught me so off guard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm as, like, authentic and raw as I can be. Oh, it's dude, like, that's how I love it. That's yeah. good. That's uh-huh. good. It's a so, podcast. Yeah. It's a podcast. So, like, there was a Christian club I was a part of, and there, um, towards the end of that of those meetings, the person would say, oh, we have youth groups here, here, and here, uh, like, one in Harrison, one in Carney, one in Newark. Like, yeah, Jersey Squad. Yeah. Jersey Squad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I knew he was going to do that. <laughs> so, um, like, I was like, I was just like, ah, I'm not going to go. Like, what's, like, just, it's not fun. Like, I don't want to do it. But then, like, around sophomore year of high school, I was just like, I can't do this anymore. I need, like, I need somewhere, like, somewhere I can be with you. Like, I have people my age. Mm-hmm. And somewhere, I, like, I know, like, I can kind of, like, just grow, like, as a person. Because I didn't really take my faith seriously. So, around May, like, I was at a really low point in my life. Um, it wasn't nothing depressing. It was just, like, I was, like, I can be doing a lot more in my life. I can be doing, like, my life uh, can be a lot different than what it, like, I, I used to say that all the time. So, early May, um, towards the end, like, so early May, late April, I started going through this youth group in Kearney. And um, one of those days, I had missed youth group and I, I had missed this Christian club because I was just like I don't want to go like I was like, I just wanted to go home after school I just went well, it was on a Friday so after school I just went home I didn't want to talk to anyone but I remembered that youth group was on it's mm-hmm. like you know what I'm gonna go I'm just gonna go for fun um but like I'm just gonna go because I don't want to be in the house so um I went and then I as soon as I walked in I said God I just want my life to be completely different I need to restart like everything um and then at that night, um, the pastor who was speaking that day, he's like, I'm not going to do a message because I felt it in my heart that I need to pray for some people here. So we're just like, they had worship and um, we're just going to have some leaders here praying for you. And if you want to come for prayer, just come. But it was basically more of a prayer night. Mm-hmm. And it's like, cool. 
Um, I'm not going to have someone speaking to me for 30 minutes, <laughs> but I'm going to have my own time with the Lord. Like mm-hmm. basically like what, what I, you needed. what I needed. So I went to a leader and I confessed some stuff I was going through and then she prayed for me. And then towards, toward after that, I was like, you know what? I want my own time with the Lord because it was the first time in which like I actually wanted to pray. I actually wanted to like repent basically. Yeah. Um, so I went like to, like, to the edge uh, of like the, the staircase, yeah. you know, like what I'm talking about. I know, I know. And I started kneeling, I started praying, and then, like, I started, like, I was, I started praying so hard, I was like, God, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, like, I'm actually going to give you my life now, because I know that I'm wrong, I know that, like, I can be doing so much better, but also that you're good, and I haven't given you, given you my life, I've seen you do this stuff, but also I didn't care. Mm-hmm. And I was also saying, like, if you come back, please don't forget me. <laughs> it was, I mean, I because I grew up in such, like, in a, tr- in a church, I, was, like, was so vocal about that. Like, I knew it was real. You knew what was going on. Yeah, I knew what was going on. So when that was happening, the youth pastor came to me and started praying. And then he, him and I, like, like he was praying over me for, like, around, like, 30 minutes or 45 minutes. And that, like, I got wrecked. Um, like, he didn't know me. He didn't know my story. But like, he knew that he had to be there. And when, like, in the middle of all of that, I had an encounter with God. And that was when I actually was like, oh, this is what you are. Like, you're real, but you're good. You're holy, but also you're loving. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, I can give you my life now. I think at this point, it turned into, I say this a lot, it mm-hmm. turned into, you're not my mom's God anymore. You're yeah. my God. I mean, God has no grandchildren, you know? Mm-hmm. So I was living off of my, own, my, of my mom's faith. Um, I was living off of her revelation of God, out of her, out of her revelation of the Bible. Like I read the Bible, but I was just like, uh, it's just like a page. I, I'm not. I'm not. Gonna it's just it. an old. Yeah, I like yeah. that. God doesn't have grandchildren. Yeah, I, I really like. God doesn't that. have yeah. grandchildren. Yeah. He has children. Period. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I I heard that from this pastor. I'm not gonna say, it, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, like God has no grandchildren. So I was just living off of my mom's faith. I was living off of her revelation of God. Of my out of like so many friends, like they had their own revelation of God. It's like, oh, cool, good for you. But I, I knew I needed my own. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was May 12th, 2017. The day after, I was, just, I, I was like, okay, I need to take this serious. Um, and I needed to make my faith my own. And then I had a Christian friend I was working with at a, as, a swimming, as a swim instructor. And I told her what happened. And she was, re- she was praying for that. And she was so happy. But then immediately after... Side note, that same day, I got into a car accident. <laughs> but Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Wait a minute. <laughs> it was, but here's the thing. I, I was 16 years old. I had a permit, not even a driver's license. <gasps> and I was oh with no. my mom. I was with my mom, but it, like, so, side, it was like, since the side note, it was my turn to go. It was raining a lot, so it was my turn to go, and it was green. The person who hit my car, he hit, he hit it on the side. He passed a red light because he didn't see it was a red light. Oh, because like, it was raining. Yeah. But also, I was just like, oh, the enemy's already out to get me. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the wow. moment I gave my life to Christ, the enemy's out to get me. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but then immediately after, as I knew I had to renounce some friendships that I had. And when I told him, I was starting to take my faith seriously. He's like, oh, what for? Like, you like you were so much fun like, to hang out with. Because I had the wrong friendship. So, like, I was cursing up a storm. I was doing this, this, and that. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, like, he's like, I need to change. I'm going to, I'm, like... I had to renounce some friendships, but also because I started also making my faith known at that time, some people, like, left. You know, some friendships mm-hmm. I had left. Um, I, like, I, not many people, people know this, but at that time, I was about to date a girl, and I had to renounce her that relationship because I knew it wasn't going to lead me anywhere to the foot of the cross, you know? So, I mean, I was heartbroken. She was heartbroken, but she kind of understood where, she, where I was coming from because she also was grown up in the church, but like wasn't really taking her faith seriously either. Mm-hmm. But also at that time, like 2017, like from May 2017 to like towards beginning of 2018, that was like my honeymoon phase with the Lord. Uh-huh. Um, like, like that first love. Uh huh. Yeah. Bro, I was so in love with him. Like, I like my desire for the for the word, my desire to worship, my desire to pray, to go to church, but also just to know Jesus grew so much. Um, like I had, like, because I was going through that youth group, they had connected me to the church that I'm at now. And I was going every single Sunday. I was going every single Friday to youth group. And it's because I actually wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And, um, like my hunger for the Lord increased so much. Like I was using my social media to evangelize to these people at school. That's great. And, um, I was like, I saw so many people like starting to get impacted because of my faith. Mm -hmm. Um, like they started asking me questions. Like some people I used to go to uh, high school, like, um, like, that graduated came up to me. He's like, "Yo, like you genuinely changed. Like, what's going on?" And I was 
tell them about like I'm going to church I'm, I know Jesus now and they would be like oh why doesn't you take me and I took some of them uh, some of them weren't interested but like didn't have time but um, like I started using that time. I was like, you know what? I'm going to speak about Jesus to you because, like, he's done this for me. But just because you've given your life to the Lord doesn't actually mean, like, exactly. stuff is, stuff exactly. is hard. People think, stuff people, is people think, like, oh, I gave my life to Jesus. Now this is a walk in the park. No, it's oh, not. If anything, no, it gets harder. And yeah. I, I said this one time. Uh, I think the reason why it gets harder is because now you actually acknowledge that the sins that you're doing are wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you – because before – you, were, you did these things like cursing and other stuff that you might have been doing that was wrong. But you didn't know that it was wrong. Or maybe you knew, but you just didn't care. Yeah. But now when you actually gave your life to Christ and you're aware of these things, it's like, okay, what I did is wrong mm -hmm. and I need to fix it. I need to repent from it. So it's hard. Yeah. And that's, you know, again, that's why temptations are a thing for us Christians because we're human. So it's like we're always going against our own flesh. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to temptation, I think it's in James. I, the way that I see it also is like temptation, like... Although it's from the flesh, I all, like tem like time of temptation is always like an invitation to come to like to come to the Lord. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, mm -hmm. because it's like I'm tempted, but instead of going to the flesh, like, hey God, here I am. Like here's my temptation. Instead of falling into temptation, you yeah. run to God. Yeah, because I I usually see it, like as a moment of in, like not because God isn't the one who tempts, but also it's like okay, maybe this is an invitation for me to come to the Lord and bring this because, like, the Word says, like, take your thoughts captive. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, He's given us a way out of temptation, and that's, because, that's through intimacy with the Lord. Yeah. You know? So, like, I always take stuff like that as, like, okay, I'm tempted. Let's bring this to the Lord. Let's, like, actually know the Lord as, like, my deliverer from temptation. So it's, when, it's like, in those moments when you're feeling the worst and when you're feeling, like, these temptations that's when you're like, okay, no, this is, I have to pray more. I have to read the word more. Yeah. yeah. I have so, to get more into relationship with yeah. God. Yeah. And that's exactly how it yeah. should be, you know. I think also another thing about coming to Christ for the first time, it's like you were talking about temptation, also sin. I feel like when you come to Christ, you feel more like a horrible person. Yeah. Because of the fact that you're aware, you said, of what you're doing is wrong. I mean, it's, it's, it's the same thing as in Isaiah 6. Um, Isaiah has a vision of heaven, and he sees everyone singing, holy, holy, holy. But then he starts feeling like, oh, my gosh, like, why am I here? I'm yeah. so dirty. Like, who yeah, am I to exactly. be seen? This? Exactly. exactly. And then yeah. the, set of, the set of him comes to him and touches his mouth with the coal, and he's, like, made like clean and made yeah. righteous. But also, like, because you're approaching such a holy God, um, it's natural for you to feel like, oh, I can't come close. Like, yes. It's the fear of God, basically. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't come close because he's so holy, but also because I have my own struggles. But also, like, it's like, no, I've made you clean. Like, like Jesus, like, his blood has made us so clean to the point, like, we can actually come into the throne room. Exactly, we you know? can. Back then, uh, you can read in the Old Testament, the beginning of the Old Testament, when in order to come to Christ, you have to go through a whole cleansing and you have yeah. to do a bunch of sacrifices. Now... I feel like it's almost simpler because the blood of Jesus Christ came and washed our sins away. Really yeah. washed us. And so. it's, it's not just like my favorite Bible passage is in Hebrews 4. Um, and it's like Jesus was tempted in every single way. Like, be, like So he understands us, but also because if he understands us, we can come boldly to him because yes. he's going to know. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, you were tempted with this way. I don't shame you. I actually was tempted the same way as you were. Now you can come to me and I can like, and I can give you everything you need to come out of this temptation and I can give you more of myself. Yes. See, Jesus is so, so, so good. Jesus yeah. does not care what you've been through. He will come and change your life. Yeah. But yeah, well. I think this seems like a good place to take a little break, yeah. guys. Break hang on right there because we'll be right back and we'll be talking some more stuff. So yeah, hang on tight. We'll be right back. What's up, guys? Hi, everybody. We have a very quick announcement, guys. Yes. If you have never heard of Innovate Design, go check them out yes. for all of your custom needs. If you need mugs, T-shirts, hats, Anything, you name, name it. it. They can make it custom. We have a couple of examples here. They made our wonderful mugs and our wonderful cups. Look at these cups. Look, at this. Look how Our beautiful names this on the back with 1 John 1, 7 on the back. Guys, Innovate Design is wonderful for all of your custom needs. Make sure you guys go check them out. Go check the them out. Their yes. socials. Go check them out. Check them out in the link in our bio. Make sure you use them for all of your needs. Yes. You, know? you can check them out. See what they're all about. And anytime you need anything, make sure you send them a DM on Instagram and you can book and talk to the owner, Deronisi. Deronisi. You guys can come up with a design that is perfect for you. For it's you. It's so easy to work with them, right? So easy to work oh, with yeah, them. Oh, yeah. like Love them. Oh, yeah. Deronisi, she's a very practical person to talk to has yes. great ideas you guys do not want to miss out this chance make sure you go check them out go check them out guys
And we're back from our break, everybody. We are back. I see that you're back and that you've been patient. And I like that. I like that. I there like we go. That. He's like back that. saying the iconic phrase. Yo, we should make t-shirts it. with I like that on it. Oh, that's from this podcast? Yeah. yeah. Oh. So there <laughs> it's one, okay, let me explain. If you haven't watched the episode... Um, I don't. I think that that one we had was it didn't work out actually. It, it, I don't think it did. Yeah, but there's this one episode where he goes, "I see that Jeff and left. I like that." But the way that he said it was so funny, and we were dying, the dying, boys dying, 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 the dying, boys dying of laughter. Love it. <laughs> I like that. I like that. They're always saying so that. I like we, that. We, had to, we kept laughing, so it True. didn't work. You like, like, I like that. <laughs> 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 I like that. Oh, we should make the t-shirts do everything. Speaking of t-shirts. We came matching by accident today. Shout out to Kingdom, Shout actually. Shout out to Kingdom Guitar. This is their merch right here. Go check exactly. them out on Shout Instagram. Out Kingdom. But anyways, Love you guys. <laughs> let's keep going. Let's go. Jump, continue on with your testimony. Mm-hmm. My man, continue. So, like, as I was saying, like, life with Jesus, just because, like, you've given your life to the Lord, like, it's not the easiest. Like, we were, like, talking about temptation. But um, one of the things I struggled with, and I'm really open about this, was that I struggled a lot with mental health. And I also struggled with depression. But um, I struggled with it, like, in 2018, but, like, the most recent one was, like, around, like, September 20... Uh, no, it was from the end of 2020 to, the big, like, towards the end of 2021. Got it. But, like, it came in different episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, like, the most intense one was, like, in September to December of 2021. And, like, at that point, like, I was struggling with so much. Like, I, had, I don't know where it came from, but, like, it was just something, like, I can't continue with this. It's still, like... Um, like it was like one of like one of the hardest seasons I went to because I legit had no motivation to do anything and I had so much to do at that season, you mm-hmm. know. So like do like wh- like once you actually experience that and you have to go through so much, like it's like it t- like you get so exhausted. But like at that point, um, like I think around December because it, it, um, December of twenty twenty one was like around the time it got the hardest, and I was like I can't do this. So this anymore. was kind of like recent. Like yeah, twenty twenty one. Um, like a year and a half ago, mm-hmm. and I was like, I can't take this anymore. Um, I need something new. Like I, 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 I was bringing it to the Lord, but I was like, Where are you? Like I can't even do this anymore. And then my mom found out because I had journaled about it, and was just like, Are you okay? Like what's going on? So I spoke to her about it, but then like around that same time frame, I was about to go to a conference, passion conference, in um, and in that whole like week because I, I because it was just two days but like I had planned to stay the whole week because I had some friends I, I was meeting up from social media mm-hmm. and um those friends like they did two nights of worship um the day before they had been set out of church and they did like uh, oh, like, wow. two, like so I went December 31st 2021 uh-huh. into like 2022 2022 so we did like because passion is always at the beginning of the year right? yeah mm-hmm. yeah it's like always like the first couple of days of the year so um we did like a worship night f- for New Year's Eve from nine a.m. to one, from nine p.m. to one a.m. Uh-huh. Wow. And then uh, we did it, we did it this at the same church the day after, but like from six to nine. But um, the day of the New Year's um, worship night it was so powerful. Like I genuinely have an experience of presence of God as I experienced there. I legit like felt like okay, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I got to free from uh, from other stuff there, but but um, I was like I just really want to be healed from depression from mental health. And I was going, like, I went to conference, and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to take in, uh, I'm just going to go with, like, go all out. So I'm going to, because what you put in, you take back out, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I was like, okay, um, I'm going to be engaged. I'm going to be, uh, whatever God wants uh, to do here, I'm going to do it with, like, whatever, because I, I want to be, ex- uh, I want to be expectant, but also want to be a part of what he's doing in an event, you know? So um, the first day, amazing. It was an amazing night. Um, but then second day. Um, I was like, I just really want to be free from this. Like, I don't care what people think. I don't care how it's going to look like. I just really want to, like, I don't want to go back home the same way I came, I came here. But then it wasn't until, like, legit, the last session, the last song, um, Son of Suffering. From mm-hmm. Beth, from Son of yeah. Suffering. Bro, that song. Uh, when it came out, it was my favorite song. And still, like, since then, like, since it's been released, I, like, it's been my favorite song. I was listening to it on the way here, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's <laughs> crazy. Um, so, like, I love that song so much. But then, like, when it started playing that song, I don't know how to explain it. Like, it's, like, the biggest, like, weeping I've ever had in my whole entire life just came out, out of like, uh, on one moment. I had an encounter with the Lord at that point, too. Like, like, right, like right in the middle of that song, I was on my knees. I could not, con- like, I started crying. I couldn't control it. People were starting, like, like, they, like, put their hands on me, started praying for me. I couldn't control it at all. In the middle of that, 
I legit see Jesus physically in front of me. Stop. Like in, vi- like in the vision. <laughs> I, I didn't see what? his face. I didn't see his face, but I, like, I can clearly see that Jesus was in front of me, like in the vision, you know? I was like, oh my gosh, like, he's right in front Wait, of me. Wait, how did you feel? I didn't, like, I was, I, I was weeping. I couldn't, like, that was like, like I, <gasps> like, I couldn't control it. So, like, oh just oh thinking about God. it, I get chills, like, even to this day. No, I'm like, oh So, gosh. like, I legit saw Jesus physically in front, in a vision in front of me, like, touching my head and just, like, just, like, like letting me know it was going to be okay. I was weeping. Like, there's, like, in, in the song it says, there's a God who bleeds, there's a God who weeps. Like, he was weeping with me every time I wept, you know? Mm-hmm. So, like, it shows me, like, he was with me every single moment. I was, like, struggling with depression. And then I get up, it's like, oh, okay. I had an encounter with the Lord. And that, I, th- and it was like, okay, I'm free. But then I was like, okay, what's going to happen now? And then immediately when I get up, one of my friends was right next to me. Um, and immediately after, like, I get up, he, like, I, like, it was legit, not even one second. He, like, he didn't know what was happening. He didn't see what was happening. Like, yo, I was weeping. He didn't see I was having an encounter with the Lord. He didn't know anything. He comes up to, like, he, like, I was right next to him. He looks to me and he prophesies, don't you dare give up with music. Don't you dare stop. Because it has encouraged me many times in my faith. It has encouraged so many young people. And at that point, like, he, this friend, um, he was someone I looked up to because he'd grown up in the missions. Like, he grew up in Turkey, actually. Oh, wow. And, like, at that, like, you can't be, like, basically, like, it's not that you can't be a Christian in Turkey, but it's, like, it's not something, like, that's... That's common. seen over there. Seen, it's common. Mm-hmm. So, persecution there is heavy. So, like, um, he comes, I, I'm actually not going to say his name, but, like, he looks at me and says, don't you dare give up with music because it's encouraged me in the faith, and I know it, these, are, these are songs that came from heaven and do not stop it and he looks at me and it's like don't you give up and then i was like okay let's do this like i'm actually going to start going back into music and like and then since then since that encounter not once have i struggled with depression amen since hallelujah then. so it's a <laughs> yes. amen like, oh, I, like i kid you not 2022 was genuinely hard year for me because Within a span of like four or five months, I had like ten closed doors with so many things. Like I, I went through one of the most confusing seasons in my life. I went through so much. Um, I lost a job and um, a lot of things. Um, and if I hadn't been free from depression, I think I would have been in a worse spot. So mm-hmm. Jesus knew what was going to happen. It's like, okay, I'm going to set you free now, and I'm going to walk with you in those seasons. Um, but since I came back from Passion, from that conference, um, I was in a moment of worship. And then I was, like, just singing one of the songs that I had, like, I had written because I, like, some of the songs that God has given me, I don't purposely come out with yet because I just want it, like, it's just between me and him. And um, there was one point, like, I legit heard the Holy Spirit, like, and it, like, not that I heard the Holy Spirit, it just came out of nowhere, and I knew it was the Holy Spirit. I, uh, I started saying, don't you dare stop dreaming, don't you dare stop dreaming. Like, same things that my friend said, but, like, I, like, I didn't remember that word, and it's, like, at that, po- at that moment, um... And then I started singing the bridge of a song I released. It was, you will restore our joy and hope and cause us to sing praise forever. And um, immediately after, I got led to Psalm 126. And um, I was like, oh my gosh, God's going to give me a song right now. And then I got into Psalm 126, and within 30 minutes, the song was written. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) You wrote the song in... 30 yeah. minutes. Yeah. So fun fact, guys, he's also a singer, songwriter. Yeah. Okay. So he, if yes. you guys can, well, I'm going to link your stuff in the bio. Don't worry. Yes. You guys can go check out his stuff. It's amazing. Yes. I love his music. Yes. Yeah. So like I had written a song, like it was like, it was called, because it was in Psalm 126, I titled the song 126. And um, it was one of the songs that like, I was like, oh my gosh, like, what is this? Like, I like, because I'm the type of person, like, I'm pretty confident in what the Lord has given me, but I'm also like, hey, what do you think about this song? And I showed it to uh, a couple of my friends, like, you need to come out with this soon. Like, this is, like, one of the song, the, one of the best songs that God has given to you. And I don't mean that in pride. Just, like, I was, like, because I believe, like, you're held responsible to everything that God has given you. So, like, okay, I need to come out with this song soon because I know that um, he's going to hold you accountable to the stuff he's given yeah. to you. Mm-hmm. So I messaged my producer and I said, hey, Let's pause the other songs we're working on because I believe, like, I had a deep conviction that this song has to come out. And then we recorded it. I released it. But then after, uh, after I recorded, uh, before I recorded, after I written the song, I had gone through, like, one of the most confusing seasons of my life. So I wrote that song prophetically as well. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's, oh, that's, yeah. Crazy. That's crazy. And that's yeah. in your own life, too. Yeah, basically. Mm-hmm. So um, when I had written that song, like, a couple weeks after, like, 
everything had seemed like I was going to move to a different state, that I was going to get uh, this job at a, a church down in uh, Georgia, and, like, everything, because I had gotten prophetic word that um, I was, like, God had me in moving, and I didn't tell anyone um, about the, everything that I was going through, like, when it comes to just, like, looking for a job down south. Mm -hmm. That then it was actually that person and another person said the same thing, mm -hmm. and it didn't come out. So I was confused. Like God, didn't you say through this uh, through prophetic word that like this is going to happen? And now that I see, I should have tested those prophetic words, of course, because like the, the, the Bible says, like, like get every prophetic word and test it. But also, I was like, I was so taken by them. Like, I was like, God's going to do it. But then, um, when it came, like when the moment when that door closed, I was like, oh. This is this is actually happening. I'm I was so confused because everywhere I, I was looking, like everywhere I was looking had a question mark in front of me basically. Mm -hmm. wow. So I didn't know what was gonna happen. I was in such a confusing moment of my life, and then I would always go back to the song. Um, uh, I, f I forget which like which one which like which lyric. I like, I'm also the worst with lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can never remember any lyrics. <laughs> I can. I actually. Like, well, Nick is good. He remembers every. He'll I'm listen good. to a song two times. Boom, memorize. I'll memorize it. I'm I'm with that, but with chords. Um, mm. No, nah, with chords, I can't. Chords, yeah. I think so. Because no. you kind of hear a song and you're like, you play, you're like, okay, I got it. Yeah. yeah I think sometimes. you're like that. Maybe. Right. So you got perfect pitch. Okay. Me too. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> so blue. Like, I'm I don't, the only one left. I don't, I don't like bringing it up, actually. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm the same with you. <laughs> so it wasn't until, like, okay, I'm just going to be faithful. I was angry at the Lord, of course. Like, I wrestled a lot with the Lord uh, after that moment because I, like, Basically, how Jacob wrestled with the Lord, I was the same way because Jacob wanted to be blessed. Like, it's a natural desire for the people of God to want to be blessed because God wants to bless his kids. Exactly, yeah. So, I just miss, you, uh, miss your mouth yeah. <laughs> with water. <laughs> <laughs> I just like. <laughs> <laughs> it happened with me earlier. So I, see um, I just spilled water. <laughs> yeah, but back guys, before recording, he was drinking water and it spilled all over him. We were in the middle of a conversation. I was like, oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I just spilled water. I'm very clumsy. I spilled water all the time. <laughs> I no, don't. No, Look, guys, I could drink water. <laughs> oh, wow. Congratulations. We're flexed, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> My shirt is soaking wet. <laughs> but <laughs> going back. Anyways. Uh, uh, but going back, like, I, I was like, okay, I'm just going to continue because also in March, I was supposed to lead, lead worship at an, event, an evangelistic event in New York. Um, so I was like, I don't want to do this, like, I'm st but I'm still going to be faithful. Um, and then, like, at that moment, I started doing a deep work in me. It's like, okay, um, ministry is not actually a calling. It's something that you're anointed with. And I'm going to go, at, like, about with calling later on because I have some takes in order to say that. Mm -hmm. Because, actually, I'm just going to say now, because when it comes to the word calling, um, I have seen so many people use that with, word with so much entitlement. Um, like, oh, I'm called to do this, I'm called to do that. When every time you see Jesus in the Bible, he always calls people to himself. You know, and when call, and one of the things that he told his disciples when he left, when he ascended, basically, is that I have given you all authority. Like, all authority has been given to me, and now go and reach people. Basically, the Great Commission, mm -hmm. because the greatest calling that he's given to us in life is the Great Commission to make disciples. So, like so many people I see are talking about the calling, but like they use Jesus to get to that calling. But what happens when they get there? They don't even know him. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's like how in Matthew seven it says like. Lord, didn't I cast out demons in your name? Didn't I do this, this, and that in your name? But Jesus said, yes, but you didn't know me. I don't know you. Ooh, yeah. Wow. I understand that. Yeah. yeah. I get it. So, like, it doesn't matter, like, if you have a calling. Like, the greatest calling we have in life is to know Jesus, is to have a primary, like, a, like the prime, like, honestly, I consider it the only calling in life. Everything else, like, he's gifted to you. Everything else he's anointed you to do. So, like, I don't consider mis uh, worship and missions or I don't consider calling. songwriting callings in my life. I don't consider, like, me being called to thousands as a calling. I don't believe in that because I'm called to Jesus. And then, I'm, like, my assignment and every Christian's assignment is to cling to Jesus and just to tell, like, and just to do whatever he says. Yes. But some you know? person could be anointed with worship. Some person yeah. could be anointed uh, with missions. It's not a calling. You're anointed to do that. Yeah. It's like we've talked about this before on the Aquino. He yes. preached about this, and I carry this preaching. Yeah. There's no such thing as titles. Yes, and that's, and that's the Your same. Your title is child of God, period. Exactly. There was a preaching that I heard at our church recently. I yeah. think it was last week. Mm -hmm. The guy who, he came from, he was a guest preacher. I don't remember mm -hmm. where he's from, but he preached about it. And he literally said, forget about titles because if you are working because of a title, then you're wrong. And that's like, and that's like every time I see something, someone saying about calling, it's like, okay, our greatest calling is Jesus. And yes, like there's some things that like people are anointed for, but the greatest calling we have is Jesus. Like mm -hmm. I don't, because... 
I've seen people in like in the music world, like in the even in the Christian world, it's like use calling, but they don't even know Jesus personally, mm -hmm. you know. So that's why I'm just like, no, I need to protect my calling, which is because when Paul called, when Paul explains it in, Ephes in Ephesians to like like live out a man worthy of a calling, it's actually not live out as if Jesus called you to live out to Him, mm -hmm. you know, like. Our calling is to be obedient to Jesus, to love Jesus, to fear God, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, to love him. And like, and that's, that's the one thing that I've had, I've been having to unlearn and to learn again, because like the only thing we're called is to Jesus and to the great commission, you mm -hmm. know, like he didn't tell, he didn't tell any of the disciples that I, uh, I've called you to build a church. I've called you to do this, this and that. Like I, he only told, I'm going to make you fishers of men, the great commission. That's right. So that's why like I'm, I'm really careful with the words that I say or when it comes to like using callings because like my calling is Jesus. He's called me his mm -hmm. and I can call him mine. Uh, like, like you don't see worship. Like it's like, I just got this weird analogy. It's like your phone, like people call you. It's not a title that calls you, you know? Mm. Mm. So like, I remember Stephanie Gretzinger. I love her so much. Oh, me too. Stephanie like, Gretzinger. she just came out with a podcast with this other ministry. I, I saw that friend. podcast, actually. It was, like, a yeah. three-hour podcast, right? It was I such, bro. It. I, she has impacted the way I worship, the way I see, like, even with Colleen. Brooke, even, even Brooke Lidger was speaking about this. Like, so many times, like, when we think our calling is this, this, and that, but then, like, we're called to a different season. Let's say, like, some, some people might think they're called to worship, but then, like, they're doing kids ministry or they're doing worship or they're doing um, youth ministry or they're doing missions. They're not going to be um, thankful for what they're doing. But then like, I was like, Oh, I want to be one. I want to be doing worship. But then when they get to the worship part, they weren't thankful for the process that when they got there, you know? Yeah. So that's why I was just like, no, we're called for the great commission. We're called for Jesus, but then he's going to lead us wherever he wants us to go because yes. that's actually going to bring so much growth into the mm -hmm. kingdom. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. Yeah. Oh, I love that analogy actually. I actually yeah. love it because it's like, it kind of shows that dude, titles are not a thing. Yeah. So I feel like that also happens a lot in leadership Yeah. where titles can literally like make someone prideful. It's yeah. like, Oh, I'm this. I'm a, but, I'm a pastor. I'm a, I'm a pastor. Leader. I'm a worship leader. I'm this. But it's like, no, but you're a child of God. It's like you said, my calling is to, you know, it's Jesus, you know? Mm -hmm. So my calling isn't to uh, be, be in worship. My calling isn't to do this, this, that. Those are anointings that yes. God has placed over your life. Giftings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gifts. Yes. I also, um, I think a big part of it, too, is a lot of people forget that whatever God gives you, he can take away. Yeah. That's and that's true. why titles are meaningless. Yeah. Because one day you're a worship leader, the next day you're not. Exactly. I mean, here's the thing: like, you're not gonna get to heaven and say, "Well, he's not gonna say to you, well done, good and faithful pastor. Well done, good yes. and faithful worship leaders. Well done, good and faithful, and faithful servant. servant. Exactly. Meaning what? Meaning your job is to serve God however He wants. Not yeah. the your way. title isn't to be a pastor. Your title isn't to be a worship leader. Your title isn't to even be serving food to others. Yeah. Like, no, your title, mm -hmm. it, or not even the title, you are the servant. You have to serve. You have to yeah. make fishers of men. Yeah. Like that's literally exactly. it. Yeah. Like, and there's so many ways to evangelize. Like you exactly. can evangelize through music through arts you podcasts can, like, exactly exactly there's so uh, many ways so, so i many guess ways. that actually comes into your worship minister yeah kind of so what's like you know how is that how did it start how's god been using you what's the process um i mean worship has always been like a huge part of my yeah, life because we kind of did talk about like you when you were a kid you would yeah. be listening yeah. uh -huh. so like i know that like how worship is going to look like for me is honestly i don't know actually because <laughs> I have seen some glimpses. Like I have been like part like I like I've been like by the grace of God I've been invited to some places to go and lead worship and every time I see like so many different experiences that I have, like when I like some of them involve youth, some of them involve like how we spoke about earlier, like some of them involve people getting healed in the middle of them and then some of them are gonna involve like even going to missions. Like because I was raised with 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 a, with a missionary mom, um, missions is a huge part of me. Like um, when I went to YWAM a couple uh, uh like I think in two years now um like i got so wrecked like there's so like because here's the thing like there's eight billion people in the world 3.1 billion of them have never heard of jesus like yeah. legit like never like they don't they have don't, this yeah they don't know mm -hmm. yeah and jesus will only come back when those 3.1 exactly. billion people are have been in the bible says that jesus is going to come back when all the four corners of the world have yeah. heard about his name so that's why like i have such a heart for missions it's because it's like i want those people to know jesus but also i want them to come back mm -hmm. because like he's gonna have like and i think it's such like it's it's such a, I, th I think it's more of the grace of god like he wants everyone to know that he exists because he wants to give them the chance to know him because he doesn't want people to perish mm -hmm. you know so that's why like 
every single person that I believe, uh, every single person who believes in Jesus, I think they're called to the missions, but also in their local community, um, maybe even to nations, maybe to even just like anywhere. Like mm-hmm. it can be in your school because I think so many people think that missions is just going to a different country when it might not. Like I th- like the biggest missions field that I walked in was my school. There you, you know? go. Mm-hmm. So like was my high school because I go to Christian college now, but mm-hmm. even just because someone goes to Christian college doesn't actually mean that they're Christian. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So like, like for me, like I've seen some glimpses of here and there, like how it's going to go. Like, like I've, I also have a huge heart for unity. Um, like, and I know like that's going to like some of the things that I may say, like it can be like a hot take, but like the reason why I do it is because I want the church to come back to this the Bible know, Bible. Mm-hmm. And I wanted them to come back to Jesus. And, like, I know so many churches who, like, use this so faithfully. And I give them so much props. Because, like, so many, like, and I'm not saying this to critique the churches. I'm not, like, I, I, I haven't built, like, a ministry yet in order for me to get here. But I also, like, I know, I also know the word of God in order to say, like, no, you're wrong. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean that pridefully. It's like, no, you have to go back to what Jesus has said because yes. he has a final say, mm-hmm. you know? So that's why I'm so faithful, like, when it comes to, like, unity in the body. That's going to require maybe having moments of confrontation or maybe of moments of just, like, how are you doing, you know? So, like, one of, my, one of the greatest experiences I've ever been to was at The Send. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went to The Send in Kansas City last year. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, my God. I was actually, um, there was a year that I was, me and my friends, we were actually, like, trying to make it happen, actually. Go to the one in Lancaster. They're having it in August. No way. Yo, I'm yeah. going. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going. Oh my are god. You, are you no, I already w- bought my ticket. No, wait, because oh, my going. parents were talking about going to Lancaster to watch the play in August. Yeah. At, on Sight and Sound. It's like it's gonna be right next to Sight and Sound. Yo, oh, this I'm is going. perfect I'm timing. Going. Yeah. Okay, we'll talk about this after the podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so like one of my favorite experiences, like I have never experienced the glory of God ever in my life had like how I did at the scent. Mm-hmm. Um because like dude, like people were leaving wheelchair wheelchairs behind. I heard of oh, stories wow. of people were walking with like self-harm marks and leaving like as if like it was never there like yes. people around me like with deaf ears with blind eyes left completely healed i have never experienced that in my whole entire life and i grew up in a charismatic church you uh-huh. know and i have never experienced something like that because like here's the thing going back to worship throughout the whole event they would always go back to holy 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 is the lord um and once you exalt the name of jesus you, you see two things you see unity and you see miracles Mm-hmm. Yep. so when it comes to um those two things you're gonna see like like one like by the beginning of the send like i saw like a group of people getting some other people like from different churches around the area and actually getting them into the line into a line of sight and starting like doing prophetic dances like with different flags which was so like i've never seen that but it was beautiful uh-huh. and like i've seen so many other people like from different churches coming together it's like oh what church do you go to oh i go to the so-and-so church you know uh-huh. it's like i've never seen that before uh, like, like I, I, the, tr- the body of Christ coming, coming together. together. Yeah, they're exactly. And it's like people from different do- denominations. It was like, oh, this is what heaven is going to look like. There's no denominations in heaven. Yes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know? So, like, it, like, I have never seen so much glory as at that event because I saw people get healed and I saw people get unified together. But that's because of one thing. They started going back to Revelation. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. And then going back to worship. If you want your worship life to change, I'd recommend you reading Isaiah 6 and the book of Revelation. Mm-hmm. Because, like, worship is not about me-centered songs. And I believe there's a time and place for that. If you were to, see, if you were to read Psalms, there's, like, David's, like... David, yeah. David was, like, uh, honest with the Lord. But he never intended for those Psalms to be published, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the songs that we sing congregationally, even the songs that I sing in private, are all about exaltation, bringing yes. it back to the Lord. Because, w- like, so many... I've seen so many people sing, uh, say, like, Oh, I want heaven to come. I want to experience heaven. Okay, so start singing songs about the exaltation of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because then, like, once you actually start, then you're going to see, like, oh, he's above every single thing. And once you actually start singing, because I took a class on deliverance at school, and my professor said one of the most important things that he does in a deliverance session is that he always plays songs about exaltation. Mm -hmm. Because he believes, like, even, like, here's the thing. There's a, I think it's in James. Demons believe that God exists, and they shudder. Yes. So they believe that Jesus is exalted above them. And then in the ascension of Jesus, he basically um, basically made every single enemy under his feet, mm-hmm. you know? So they come to that reality. So once you actually exalt Jesus, you see so much freedom. I think that's another very important thing real quick is that 
whatever you're listening to music wise matters a lot yes yeah because that's why yes me personally i don't Nick. this is true for nick as well i don't listen to any secular music yeah me too i don't uh, my everything i listen to is strictly christian music and i'm very careful with what i listen to because before i decided to do that i was listening to a lot of bad stuff yeah and i saw how negatively it impacted my life and how things were going wrong yeah and you're bringing bad things into your life that could have been avoided because yeah. music has power it, that's a whole different topic to go into that we won't get into that people today. don't believe music is actually spiritual i right? mean i kind of it, it is because if you were to, I, I just read first chronicles recently mm-hmm. and i that actually is like music has such an important part with the presence of god mm-hmm. Because like every time the glory of God filled the temple in the in First Chronicles, music was always a part of it. Yeah. You know. There you go. So, like worship is more just like you're ministering to the Lord. I, like for me, like my worship life changed after reading Revelation because it's like I was like, no, worship isn't for the people around me. Is it? It isn't like, like when I'm in worship, I minister to the Lord. I minister to His presence because it, it's for Him. It's basically a, a love song for Him. Yes. You're making because. He doesn't need to know that he's holy. He already knows he's holy. You're actually making it known into your mind. If you were to read like in Isaiah 6 or 1, or I think Revelation 4 or 5, they're saying holy, 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 but to each other, not mm-hmm. to God himself. But because you're like, they're actually making it known to another. It's like, holy, he's holy. There's no one like him. What is this? Where are we? Like, this is heaven, you know? Yeah. He already knows he's holy. He wants his people to acknowledge the fact that he's holy so mm-hmm. that he can bring his presence in. Yes. You know? That's perfect. I think that's just like a great way to think about it. To wrap up all of this, yeah, everything that we've learned here, what's one piece of advice for the youth who want to have that intimacy with Jesus? Mm-hmm. Maybe I they're watching right now and they're like, Daniel, this is great. Yeah. But how, like, w- what's that advice? What's that key that I need? So one piece of advice that I would give to like my generation, because although I'm Gen Z, I'm on the older side of Gen Z. Mm-hmm. Uh, more like a zillennial. <laughs> <laughs> a zillennial. <laughs> a zillennial. <laughs> um, like one piece of advice that I would give for Gen Zs to, to not trade um, like your life and intimacy with Jesus just because something looks pleasing. Mm. You know, like there's, I have, I've had many invitations to like do this, this and not for ministry. Uh, not like, not that it was bad, but it would have required me for, for me to sacrifice a lot that I have built up with the Lord, you know? Mm. And I knew that if I had gotten in that, my, my relationship with the Lord would have, like, shat, been shattered. Mm-hmm. Um, like, like, a title or a ministry position is not going to satisfy you. And even to those, to those who aren't Christian, it's just like, like, don't trade the fact that Jesus died for you on the cross or that Jesus, like, can satisfy you for something in this world. Because it, you might feel a moment of satisfaction, like, if you're doing so many other things apart from Jesus, but you're always going to fall flat. I'll fall flat on your face after that, you know? Um, like, I have ne- I have experienced so many things, and the one thing that can satisfy me is Jesus. Mm-hmm. I Man. always go back to that one thing. I have seen, like, because this thing, like, I think it's in Psalm 34 that says, like, hold taste and see the goodness of God. Um, he's the only thing that can satisfy me. And I don't say that, like, just because, like, the Bible says that. I can, because like, I've actually experienced that. I mean, I think it comes, like, once, like, I think it comes at a point in your life that, like, you believe something just because it says it in the Bible, but some, like, sometimes, like, when, when the Bible actually becomes something you experience, then it changes your faith. Yeah. yeah. You know? 100%. So, like, I've actually experienced Jesus satisfy me many times. I think another way that Jesus satisfies you, too, is kind of through music, right? Yeah. So, I wouldn't even say it's through music. I would just say it's just knowing him personally. Mm-hmm. So I feel like with you specifically, like, when you're songwriting, yeah. right? I feel like God also speaks to you through that, and that's how you yes. get to have a connection with him yeah. personally, you know? Yeah. I mean, all the songs that I've had, I mean, the way that I've written music before, I mean, all the songs have been different, mm-hmm. you know? Like, going back into songwriting, uh, like, the first song I really I've honestly I have so many songs I've written that I haven't released yet like mm-hmm. the first song I wrote um I was five years old and it was I, it's, I'm gonna say in Portuguese and also in English it was <laughs> <laughs> the enemy is annoying yeah you were five I was five years old I mean, wait, wait, is it like a rap song or something nah. is it a rap song <laughs> <laughs> I forget how it went I, but that like that I mean even your dad brings it brings it up to my mom so often because I showed it to him you did <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I got it. Probably to remembers it. I think he does. I okay, think he does. I'm gonna ask him today. Oh, guys, fun fact: my dad plays guitar. Him and Daniel played a lot together. They did a lot together. Um, yeah. my my dad says sometimes I used to come over to my house and just like play around with him. Yeah. 
but I'm gonna ask him about it. Yeah, but like, there's been so many songs. Like, all of my songs have been different. Um, like, the first song I wrote, the first song I released, "Got a Victory." Like, that's a, like an important song to me because like that's actually my life story in a song. That took me four months to write. Wow. But like, the second song was um, "Sanctuary." Um, that like I was just reading through Exodus 25. Like, ex- like the first half of Exodus is so like, like oh my gosh, this is crazy. Yeah. Like the miracles. But then after they cross it, like the river or whatever, or, or no, the, the sea, uh, the sea the yeah. Jordan, yeah, the Red Sea, the Red Sea. There the we go. Jordan River. Oh, I was gonna say the Jordan River. That is <laughs> not the Jordan not, River. That is no, not correct. after they cross the Red Sea, it's all about like laws and building the, te- the tabernacle. Yeah, we just and all finished that. reading Exodus because um, we're doing the three sixty five day mm, plan. plan. And yeah, the first beginning was like psh, mind blowing. The second part was just like you uh, have to do this, 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 yeah. this, this, this. And it's a perfect. I guess it's a perfect way to even introduce Leviticus because yeah. It's, oh it's, yeah, it's like a Leviticus perfect. is just all the laws. That I was we, talking to my mom about Leviticus, and she actually really likes Leviticus. Oh, it's, me too. Yeah, I, said, I really like you're it. You're weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree with. I was reading Leviticus, and Nick was like, "Oh, it's just laws." I'm like, "Okay, but do you not understand that when you're reading Leviticus, you understand why Jesus died the way no, he did?" No, yeah. yeah. You're understanding why I said happened. that later, though. I, in the beginning, yeah. I was like, ah, Leviticus. Gonna, but I was like, no. Nah. The, the beautiful thing about Leviticus, is, though, is that you see why Jesus came. Yep. Yep. You yeah. literally see why Jesus came. I mean, it also gives you the fear of God because you can see that he's... Oh, I, exactly. I can say That's that my it. fear of God definitely raised a lot yeah. in a good way. Yeah. You know? exactly. I'm going to do a Bible study with your mom, read Leviticus. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all read Leviticus with your mom. <laughs> so, like, I was reading through Exodus. I was like, oh, this is so boring. But then um, it was, like, February 2020, and then... Um, I started reading um, Exodus 25, and it was like when God wanted to set like a tabernacle in the middle of his people, and then he said, then have them make me a sanctuary so I can dwell among them. Mm-hmm. So like basically, like, he wanted to make a sanctuary, a tabernacle that his presence can come so that he can be close to his people, you know? Yeah. So then like I, like, I was just like, this is crazy. Like a holy God wants to be with his people who are sinful, you know? So... Uh, the chorus came out. I was like, "Let this be a place in which your presence dwells with us. Like, th- let this be a place in which your life is alive with us." Yeah. So, but then, like, within thirty minutes, that song came out. You know, but then, like, there's some songs that takes me months to write. It's like every single song is different. Like how I wrote like 126 is completely different. They all come like whether I'm here, or whether I'm in prayer, or whether I'm talking like having a conversation. Like a song I released also enlightened was about revival because. I was connected to a group of people who was focused on having a revival. So like, they're all different. I don't have like a set structure to write songs. I just know that songs are, the, uh, like writing songs are the primary way in which how God speaks to me, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Like other than songwriting, I, I love writing itself. Like I, I'm a deep thinker. I love writing some stuff. Like if you were to see my notes here, like I have so many things I've written now, but that's because it's something I love doing. I love writing because it's the one, one of the ways that God speaks, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. I think that's beautiful, yeah. So that's kind of how, I guess, songwriting is a very big thing in your life, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, if every time you're going to write a song, um, I always say this, like, your song is not meant to go out to the public until it, it's meant, to, like, in, until it's been, like, instead of a project, it's a prayer between you and the Lord. Hmm. When, when, when it's, like, for me, like, when song starts to, like, to feel like a project, I won't do it. Because it's like, oh, I have to release it by this, this, and they, um, like, I want it to be perfect and all that. But then when it starts feeling like a, like a prayer to me between me and the Lord, I was like, oh, this is actually organic. Like, this I'll, is the reason I'm doing this. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that's why, like, I ha- like you spoke, you told me earlier, I haven't released a song. It's going to be a year this month. Wow. wow. And there's, like, so many other people I know, like, who release music, like, out, like uh, one after the other. And that's okay. Like, I, I have nothing against that. But I... I'm the type of person, I'm very authentic when it comes to music because it's actually a part of me. It's like, it's, it's right in here. Mm-hmm. And I don't, want to, I don't want it to be fake, you know? Because people, like, especially us as young people, we can smell fake from a mile away. Oh, oh yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So, I, it's, so in, my, like, in my life with the Lord, I, don't want no, I want everything to be authentic. So, like, I don't want to be forced to, release, to write a song. I don't want to be forced to release a song. Like, I have songs I've written, like I told you too. Like I give you, like I give you a sneak peek. Yeah, we did. Yeah, one of yeah. the songs that, you know. Like, <laughs> I'm recording two songs soon, but like all, like these both songs I've written it in 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, I've written like they've like they've been my songs. Like I've produced them in 2021 with my producer in Brazil. I like I have I've copyrighted them already. They're all like ready to be released. I just haven't recorded them because I want to wait until it's the right time because I know then it's like okay, God is leading me to it. That's because, exactly how you should be thinking. Yeah, because it's it's for the Lord. You're doing it for the Lord. But also you want the people of God who listen to it to be blessed and to actually like sense like what God is doing in your life. Mm-hmm. You know? What's like here's the thing. 
<laughs> and I'm going to say this really carefully. <laughs> worship has turned into, and, and, I, and, I, and it's good, but worship today has turned into a market. You think worship has we turned into an that. industry? Yes. Yeah, I was yes. I was waiting to say industry. Worship is more than just an industry. I We're actually saw that um Anapala said that. Yes, even Anap- Stephanie Gretzinger said that. Anapala said that actually. I saw but, her on, on the podcast. Say but that. I, yeah, I, but also I've been like even sitting now for months now. But me, too, oh, me and Nick have talked about it so often. Yeah. It's like what happened to authentic worship? Why yeah. is it all about making money or becoming famous? Yeah. And that's that's releasing music. That's not worship. Yeah, but like worship has been such like an industry like. And here's the thing. If you were to see how worship music was in America or in even Brazil or anywhere in, in the world, like, if you were to compare 2023 to, like, 1990, 1980, you can see that, like, we have, got, we have come a long way. Yes. Yeah. We have, like, for the better. Like, yeah. we have seen, like, moments of spontaneous actually happen, like, moments of, like, freedom in worship. And we've actually seen the church actually grow because of that, because, yeah. like, worship has taken on an industry. So that's good, but we have to, like, tread it carefully, too. Because then it starts consuming your heart in ways yeah. that it shouldn't. Yeah, I mean, worship also, like, it's much more than a genre. Because, like, if you were to see Christian music, there's, like, R&B, there's R&B worship, R&B, uh, rap Christian music, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but if you were to go back to this, worship is a priesthood, mm-hmm. you know? Um, like, Revelation says, like, he's made us to be priests of God, uh, to come into, his, to come into uh, his temple, to come into the presence of God. You know? Yeah. So if you were to read like in Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers in the Old Testament, yeah. like people, like the priests, were only able to come into the presence of God once a year. Mm-hmm. And once. in a specific type of way, yes. too. In a specific yes. type of way, yeah. And now the fact that we have unlimited access to come into the presence of it's God. It's crazy. It's like, why? I, Which is why Leviticus, I, I would say, say is this crazy. all yeah. the time. Beforehand, if you would go into the presence of God with one yeah. thing cor- incorrect, you would die yes Literally you know die. what that the is Bible you would says it's die cool. you would die yeah i mean here's the thing when it wor- when worship like something always has to die in worship um because you can't come into the presence of god you can't come into the glory of god and still have something that you're struggling with yeah mm-hmm. um like like when we're like i wrote this down like when we're in worship like something there's like when you're presenting yourself something must die whether it's like you ha- it's a sacrifice it's not something that you like you sing just to feel good like so many songs out there are like they're blessings like which is good, like, like, uh, like, God bless me, God do this, God do that, which is good, like, we've seen so many people pray that in the Bible, we've yeah. seen even Psalm, like, even in Psalms, David was saying that, but that also happened in intimacy, you know, mm-hmm. not in a corporate worship gathering, because when you're coming together with other people, you have to present something to the Lord, it's a sacrifice, like, whether it's a dream, or whether it's uh, something you want, or whatever, like whatever it is, like you, there's nothing more pleasing to the Lord than you dying to yourself. Yeah, it's actually a pleasing or a realm to Him. Like, like how sacrifices were made in the Old Testament, the smoke would go up to heaven, and God would be delighted with that. Yeah, even today, like worship is so costly. We don't even understand the cost of worship because we have to like sacrifice our like sa- sacrifices. You you die, you die. I mean, Paul says, like, present yourself as a living sacrifice. So basically live as if you're dying spiritually. Mm-hmm. But, like, as if you're dying to yourself. I you like know? that, yeah. Um, I think that's, that's really beautiful. And it also goes back to the advice yeah. that you gave, too. You know, yeah. just be completely, give your life to Christ. Yeah. Give your life. I mean, I, I would even say that, like, get so caught up with the presence of God, with the glory of God, that it wrecks you. Yes. Um, like, how, like, my favorite passages was in, like, in Isaiah 6. Um. I was about to say Moses. Isaiah. <laughs> <laughs> Moses. Moses. No, I'm just kidding. Isaiah gets wrecked, like when he sees like every like in that whole vision, you know. But then when I think, um, I think God says, "Who can? Who's gonna go? Like who's gonna go for me and tell all these people?" And then Isaiah says, "Here I am. Send me." You know. And Isaiah comes back from that vision, and he turns into one of the craziest prophets in all the Old Testament. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like he did not care. Like he, this man even stood naked in front of the uh, in front of the people of God. To call out their sin, you know, and I'm not saying that like oh call out other people's sin. No, like mm-hmm. there was a time in pla- there was a time and place for that. that was in the Old Testament. Now in the New Testament, we have the gospel already. Yes. But get because because of the gospel, we have access into the presence of God. Mm-hmm. So get so wrecked by the presence of God, so like caught up in the glory of God that you don't care that you're doing crazy stuff for Jesus. Yes. You know, be a I, Jesus freak. Be a Jesus yeah. freak. Be a Jesus, Jesus freak. freak. Yeah. Go like, crazy for Jesus. Don't treat it as something common. You uh-huh. know. The because glor- it's not. It isn't. It's like, it's something with, like, of treasure. Like, like when they were bringing back the Ark of the Covenant back into uh, Israel, 
and it was falling, someone went to go push it up. Yeah, and as then soon he as died. Dead. Do you want to know why? Because God promised that whoever wasn't um, a Levite, right? Yeah. Yes, whoever Levi. wasn't a Levite and would touch the ark would die. Yeah. So it's not something that we can treat it as it's, it's common. Like, and also, fun fact about that, they were carrying the ark incorrectly. They can't yes. put it on a carriage. The people who were supposed to carry the ark were the Levites, and they were supposed to carry it by the handles. It was very specific yeah. in the Very Old specific, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have to treat the presence of God as a gift in our lives. Mm -hmm. like, like, it's a gift that God allows us to come into his presence because, like, apart from Jesus, if we come into the presence of God, we're dead. Yes. You know? And, like, even now in Ecclesiastes, Eight, it says, do not be in a hurry to leave the king's presence. Like, so many people today, like, they want to come into the presence of God for five minutes, out. You yeah. Know? Oh, I'm busy. I have to go do stuff. Exactly. But, like, once you're actually with Jesus and you see his beauty, you see his glory, you see, like, how he is so holy, like, you can't help but stay. And, like, the more that you stay, the more that you become like Jesus. And the more that you become like Jesus, the more that people around you are going to want to know Jesus, mm -hmm. you know? So don't be in a hurry to leave his presence because he wants to make himself known to you and... When you leave, like, if you were to leave earlier or, or like, if you don't want to stay, it's actually heartbreaking to him because he wants to reveal himself to you, you know? And I also see it like this, right? In, in terms of that, it's, like, I have this theory. I, I think I've even told Ania before. Like, I believe that we don't have time yeah. for Jesus, but we need to make time exactly. for Jesus. Because the world That's, today is crazy. Because the world because today the is world crazy. Like we'll get caught up with this. We'll get caught up with that. We'll get caught up with all these the things. The world is kind of... Tried to take us away from him. Exactly. So the truth times. is, we don't have time for him. But we need to make time. time for him. If he's truly the one that, you know, that we say we love the most, mm -hmm. the one that we exalt the most, so and we like really him. want that intimacy with him, then you're going to do everything you can. And one of those is to make time for him. I mean, make time for him. Even in John, like you see Jesus, like he had so much to do. Exactly. He had yeah. so many things to do, but he always intentionally took time to spend time with the Father, mm -hmm. you know? So, like, Jesus had crowds of thousands of people. He never, he never considered it as his greatest blessing. Yeah. Yeah. His greatest blessing was him knowing the Father. I mean, him and the Father were one, but also didn't change the fact that he needed to be intimate with him. Because yeah, because he was also 100% human, 100% Exactly, spirit. yeah. Be like Jesus, y'all. Jesus himself seeked a relationship with the Father. Yeah. Yes. I think this is actually a pretty good place to stop. But this is yeah. our longest episode, guys. We did this. We did this Sorry, guys. On purpose. <laughs> no, this was a, a very uh, on purpose thing. We did this on purpose because we thought that it was such a special topic that we're talking about. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We can't leave anything behind. So yeah, this it, is, it didn't uh, even feel like it. It did it not feel, feel like it. Oh, I, it went by so fast. I honestly no. felt like it was 30 minutes. <laughs> me too. Me yeah. too. No, but Daniel, thank you thank so, you so, so much. much. It was such a privilege having you on the pod. We honest. were so happy to have you and to finally reconnect with you because we haven't yeah. spoken in so long. We haven't. So many bro, years. We oh, but we're so happy to have thank you, you on. Thank you guys so much. Thank and thank you guys for watching this episode as well. We hope that you guys enjoyed it just as much as we did. Yes. And as always, let's keep reconnecting the youth to Christ. So we will see you guys soon. Next Thursday at Next 4 p.m. We love you guys. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye-bye.